Good evening, everyone. It is awesome to be able to come before you with another word. Um, as I said on the event page, for some reason, Facebook will not allow me to be able to um, link this to the event. I'm not sure why, but Good evening. that's Facebook for you. Um, we are going to be doing part three of our David's Story series. Um, David's Story is a unique story because it talks about the rise and fall of the kings of Israel. And if you know anything about the beginning of 1 Samuel, because we didn't start with the uh, very first uh, stories, we really focused on just David, uh, David. But it starts off with Hannah, um, who's having a hard time having a kid. And then she does end up being able to give birth and she gives birth to Samuel, who is her, um, who is, a, ends up being a prophet, a well-known prophet. Um, and he goes before the Lord because the people of Israel are like, hey, we want a king. Um, and so he goes before the Lord and the Lord's like, yes, give them a king. And so the first king he anoints is Saul. And Saul had a lot of flaws about him. And I want to make sure that we have that understanding as we're going through uh, David's story, because Saul had a lot of issues that he didn't deal with. And <clears throat> as the story continues, we see those issues. We see those issues manifest as a problem um, in the future. He ends up blatantly disrespecting the Lord by not following his um rules his order and then that's why David comes on the scene now we are starting with first Samuel chapter 26 so um it, make sure that you are putting out pulling out your case study that you're following along with that because like I said this case study is being um used as a tool that's going to help you better study the words of the Lord as we go through them. So we're going to go into prayer and then we're going to start with 1 Samuel 26 and we're going to talk about what's going on. Um, 1 Samuel is really towards the end. It's mostly about David running. Like that's really what's it, what it's all about. But Let's go ahead and go into prayer and then we're going to get into the word. So dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now thanking you for the opportunity to be able to go before your people to speak a word that you have provided us. Father God, I thank you for the prophetic word that you provided me. Father, I ask that you bridle my tongue and that and I welcome you into this space so that I am able to speak what you want spoken. Allow my mouth to be a mouthpiece of, of heaven, from heaven. Father God, let the words that you need to touch your people, touch your people. Allow them to be able to med uh, meditate on those words. Father God, and if it's anything that comes from me, don't allow your people to be able to even process it. Just let it go into one ear and out the other. Let what you need heard, said, come forth. Father God, we're also gonna come before you and we're gonna speak boldly. And we ask you to show us in the next few days, what are the steps what are the instructions you need us to carry out father god you are our father and we want we want to know your input we want to know what you need from us so father as your people um begin to get closer to you to pray more to you um start to show them and tell them what you need done father we ask these things in your beautiful heavenly son jesus christ amen Amen. All right. So we're going to start, like I said, with 1 Samuel 26. And if you look at the case study that I have on my site, I named that the search continues. So if you remember, we finished off um, last time we talked about David's story um, with Samuel. Basically, <laughs> he, uh, not Samuel, sorry, Saul basically continued to search after David and David had an opportunity to kill him, decided not to because he had respect for Saul as his king. And he said, you know, if anything is to go, to be bad that come towards you, let that come from God, uh, not me, not at my sword. And so Saul 
uh, Saul and David made a covenant and Saul was just like, you know, I'm sorry, my son. Well, apparently that just went over his head. <laughs> so the search continues. So if you, let's start with, Let's just start with the first verse, Mom. Are you going to read? Okay. And we're giving me the first Samuel 26. Yep. I mean, first Samuel. We'll get to 26 here. All right. Now, the Ziphites came to Saul in Gebeah, saying, is David not hiding in the hills of Hebatha, opposite of Jessamon? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with them to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. You can stop that. Saul, okay. So as you can see, they're like, hey, we're still looking for David and we found him, Saul. Here he is. And Saul takes a big group of men to go um, and meet David. So as you can see here, the main contributors are gonna be Saul and David. Um, we see that, you know, there are strongholds present here. And mm -hmm. a reason why I wanted to make sure I, um, So the reason why I wanted to make sure I talk about strongholds is because remember when we discussed our spiritual warfare um, series, we talked about strongholds. We talked about why those are an issue. So strongholds, you, you saw it here in two ways. So the first way you saw it was David being in a stronghold. And strongholds, just for definition purposes, is fortified place. So it's a safe place. It's a, a protected place. However, there's another way of looking at strongholds, which is the way Saul is dealing with it. Strongholds are, again, fortified places. So those are when you got such a demonic hold on you that there's no way uh, God's word can penetrate. But only with the help of the Lord. So when he was talking to David, David had the presence of the Lord with him. He was anointed by Samuel, the prophet Samuel. So he has the Lord with him. And so the Lord has been able to get through to Saul when David is with, like, around him. But as soon as David is no longer around him, Saul is now alone without the Lord's presence. And that's why that stronghold is present. That's why he's still searching after him. So I wanted to make sure that we talked about that and how that's important to recognize. When you have people in your family and you're talking to them, let's say we're talking about debt, for instance. Debt is a stronghold in a lot of families. And when you try to talk to people about debt and the way they're supposed to um, deal with money, sometimes it's like talking to a brick wall. When that happens, that's because there is a demonic stronghold present in that atmosphere where they can't even take the time to try to understand what you're telling them. They don't want to, it's like, it's like talking to a brick wall. And so that's when you notice, okay, my battle is not between flesh and blood. That's not the time to get annoyed by your family member and say, man, you're just gonna be broken, ignorant forever. No, that's when you go into prayer because you're like, no, you're not gonna be affected by that spirit of, that demonic spirit of debt or the demonic spirit of poverty. We're going to speak against it. We're going to command it. You have authority. God blew his breath in you. Therefore, the breath that comes out of you is divine. Don't waste it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add, mom? That's the truth. Um, you are royal. Um, when you are under God's covering, you is nothing that you can't do. If you follow his rule, reciprocity will follow you and so what justice has said is is right there in the bible if you don't want to believe exactly what you say go and read it for yourself yeah i it's challenge there. you there now i want to um because we're going to jump down to 24 
But I want to actually, we're not going to jump to 24 yet. We're actually going to jump down to seven, but no, six. We're going to jump down to six. But before we do that, I want to make sure that we talk about something first. So this new character is going to pop up and the name is Abasha, Abashi, 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 something like that. If you remember him earlier, we talked about him. He is the family member of the priesthood that was um, slaughtered by Saul. Remember when David went to a priest to seek, you know, um, you know, wanted to talk with the Lord, but then he also needed some food. And then Saul got mad and he felt like the priest was conspiring against him. So he killed him, his whole family, and then went and killed the whole village. <laughs> um, this is one of the family members that was able to escape and join with David. Um, so we're gonna, you're gonna see why that's important as the story continues. So we're gonna jump down to verse six. Okay. Then David answered and said to um, Ahimelech, the Hittite, and to Abishai, the son of Zebla, brother of Jacob, saying, who will go down with me to Saul in the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and there Saul lay sleeping within the camp with his spear stuck in the ground by his head. And Abner and the people lay all around him. Then Abishai said to David, God has delivered you, your enemy, into your hands this day. Now, therefore, please let me strike him at once with the spear right to the earth, and I will not have to strike him a second time. Do you want me to continue? No, that's good. So, again, Saul is delivered to David, and David's not going to kill him. He's just not. And so that's that's why this is really important um, that you recognize that there are times when God will test you by delivering your enemy to you. Let's say, you know, the whole saying, um, like in the old movies and TV shows when you, you know, were picked on for being a nerd or something. And they're like, that's going to be your boss one day. And, you know, oftentimes they give them, they give their high school bully a hard time. That's actually a test from God. Have you, are you going to treat your brother or sister properly, even if they've hurt you? Um, and so that's what's happening here. He's being delivered to David, but David's not going to hurt him. He's not going to harm him. He doesn't need to. His king, the Lord of Lords, is going to be able to handle him. And you're going to see Saul's demise in our next conversation. But you can jump to 24. And you're muted, Mom. Okay, I'm, I'll just read. So... Surely as I value the Lord. Can you hear me? Yeah. Surely as I value your life today, so may the Lord value my life and deliver me from all troubles. Then Saul said to David, May you be blessed, David, my son. You will be great, you will do great things and surely triumph. So David went on his way and Saul returned home. So you see that again, it's showing you. When the Lord, when you allow God's glory to shine through you, those, those strongholds come down. See, if David was just to kill Saul, war could break out, right? War could break out. Anything could happen, but he's not doing it. He's allowing God's glory, God's forgiveness, being humble, being really a fruitful person, self-control, Love, patience, kindness. He's a, being a fruitful person. And because of that, his glory, God's glory is shining through him. Thus, that stronghold is coming down. And his enemy who wants to kill him can literally say, 
May you be blessed, David, my son. You will do great things and surely triumph. But you're trying to kill me. That's yeah. how God, that's how God's glory works. So, when, why is God allowing this happen? What is God trying to teach us? When strongholds are present, that means God is not. And there me, that, therefore, you need to bring God into the atmosphere. Why is this happening? Well, as the story, we'll see as the story continues why it's important, but it is clear that God wants us to, uh, to reflect on our, our, our character flaws. Use the Bible as your mirror. Allow it to show you where you're going wrong. Saul's life is a warning. Mm -hmm. Be humble, humble yourself and deal with your issues. That means you got to go to get therapy, go to therapy. That's a divine gift. There's a gift of healing. That's not just spiritually. That's not just emotionally or mentally. Mm -hmm. That's also physically. That's why there are doctors. There are therapists. God get those God gave them those gifts for a reason to be used both in the natural and in the spiritual. Is that self care? Do your self care. You want to put on a face mask? Put on a face mask. You want to put on some makeup? Put on some yeah. makeup. You want to decorate your house? Decorate yeah. your house. You want to clean your house? Clean your house. Do what you need to do so that you can deal with your issues. If that is the main thing, that's not if, it should be. You should be using the Sabbath. God, God, somebody who is bigger and better than you rested uh -huh. the seventh day. That's right. In six days, he was able to do great works, create the whole world, me, you. And on the seventh day, he relaxed. That shows you what work ethic looks like. Yes, you work hard and you produce beautiful things for this world, be a productive member in society. But there are days once a week that you need to just do nothing, 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 nothing. Just keep it holy. Relax, do what you want to do. So he said... Sabbath was made for man. Man wasn't made for Sabbath, right? That means that that is for us. He literally created that for us. He modeled it for us. And you should use it. So I hope that that's bringing things full circle for you. Deal with your issues. Don't be like okay. Saul. You have anything you want to say? No, oh, I was saying that's the word. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm in the car. Um, but yeah, we yeah, we just need to not be that way. We have to do what God, you know, allows us to be able to stand. I don't know if y'all can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So yeah, yeah, you can continue. I can. I can read um, if you need me to continue. Do you know what verse you mean? I'm not done yet. So the last oh, okay. question is, how is this applicable to your life? Were there some people in your life that are dealing with strongholds? Mm -hmm. You may be dealing with strongholds. And sometimes you have to be patient with those people. Sometimes you have to leave those people. David was patient. And then he realized he couldn't be patient anymore. He had to leave. So he talked to his friend, you know, saw his son. He was like, man, I got to go. And you got to help me get out of here. So there, that's what that's, that's applicable to your life. That happens. Allow God to order your steps. That's what David did. He didn't make moves without praying to God. And that's how you should be too. Yeah. Alrighty, let's move to 27. So I um, titled this the Philistine Territory. So David ends up leaving 
where he was and going into Philistine territory because that's the only place Saul is not going to look for him. Correct. Right? Yeah. All right. So let's um, go ahead and just start reading with the first verse. And David said into his heart, now I shall perish someday, but by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should fatally escape to the land of the Philistines. And Saul will despair to the land of the Philistines. Okay, and Saul will despair of me to seek be any more in any part of his so I shall escape out of his hand. Then David arose and went out with six hundred men who were with him to Achish, the son of Moab, king of God. So David dwelt with Achish and God. Yeah, we can't hear you anymore, Mom. He was, he and his home. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, you were breaking up. Okay, uh, let me read that. First. No, you don't have to read it again. You can stop there. So basically okay. what I said, he runs into Philistine territory. So now he goes up to the king of Gath and, you know, he basically makes a deal. So I want to jump down to six. Okay. So can y'all hear me? Yeah. So Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Therefore, Ziklag has begun to the kings of Judah to this day. Now this time that David dwelt in the country of Philistine, was one year, one full year and four months. And David and his men went up and raided the Gishri, the Gizri, and the Amalites. For those nations were inhabitants of the land from old. And you, as you go to Shur, even as far as the land of Egypt, whenever David attacked the land, he left neither man nor woman alive, Ooh. but took away the sheep, the oxen, the donkey, the camel, and the apparel, and returned and came to Achish. Then Achish would say, where have you made a raid today? And David would say, against the southern areas of Judah and against the southern area of Jeremiah, and against the southern area of the Canaanite. David would save neither man nor woman alive to bring news to God, saying, lest they should inform us, saying, thus David did. And thus was his behavior all the time he dwelt in the country of the Philistines. So stop there. So you see what was happening here. He's creating this uh, illusion that he has turned his back on his people of Israel. And that's not what's happening. And to cover his tracks, he's having to kill everybody so there's no witnesses. That's right. So, you know, some would say that's not Christian-like behavior. <laughs> but if you think about it, he ain't got nothing else he can do. I mean, that, that's all he can do. He, the, he has nowhere else he can stay and to be safe. So he is having to make some um, hard choices. Um, so yeah. what is God trying to teach us here? Well... I'm not really sure what God's trying to teach you here. Honestly, I guess he can protect you even in the presence of your enemies. Um, enemies why is God allowing true. that to happen? Or he'll give you the ability. Yeah. Why is God allowing that to say He gives you the ability to fight your enemies. Sometimes God will fight you down. We can't, Ma, you're going out. 
But yeah, that's yeah, like he can protect you from your enemies. Why is this happening? I mean, God uplifts the Go humble ahead. and opposes yeah. the proud. And Saul is a proud person. And so, I mean, eventually all this is gonna come together. He's doing this. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just saying that sometimes God Mom, we can't hear you. The ability to fight you But yeah, so, I mean, that's really all we can say about that. And all this is going to come into a better understanding. Yeah. Hello? No, we can't hear you, Mom. Um, yeah, I can't hear you. No. I'm going to let Hello? you talk. I'm gonna... Yeah. Hello? I can hear you. I know you might can't hear me. No, yeah, you keep going in and out. But yeah, so the enemy, sometimes he will, um, you know, God will sometimes have you, you know, in the presence of your enemy, he'll protect you. But I think the reason why this is important to recognize the story is important to recognize is because all this is going to come into better understanding as the story progresses and um, David is able to be lifted up as a king and build his kingdom. But then also you got to understand that God opposes the proud, saw, and uplifts the humble David. Um, how is this applicable to your life? There are some times when you have to deal with enemies. Um, if you think about Grey's Anatomy episode, I always talk about this one because it's a really um, important episode. There was an episode with Dr. Bailey, who kind of looks like my mom. Dr. Bailey had to work on a neo-Nazi. And this was interesting because, you know, who wants to work on, well, on somebody who's a neo people. Yeah. yeah. And she still did it. She did her job and she saved him. Now, why does she do that? Well, has to, has to, she has to do it because that is, that's her job. She has, she has vowed to, um, be a doctor to to heal and there's gonna be times when you're in the mix of with it, your enemy and you're gonna have to still do your do your job and do your work um and i like that analogy because on that storyline because it really shows sometimes you just gotta be the bigger person and that's what david had to do he had to be a bigger person all right, we're going to move to 28. So this one's a little creepy. I call it the saddened medium. Because if you know about the story, what happens is Samuel dies. Saul goes to a medium because he doesn't know what's going to happen. And the medium tells him he's going to die. And he just gets so sad he can't even eat. It's just so bad. Like poor, poor, poor Saul. So I'm going to jump down because Saul... You know, Samuel dies, Saul um, tells all the mediums and things, y'all got to get out, like y'all y'all can't be here. And then he reaches out to somebody, he's like, hey, do we know any mediums in the area? I need to talk to somebody. So I'm going to start reading. Unless, Ma, is your, your audio better? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I can hear you good. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, so that's good. Can you start reading at first eight? Sure. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes, and he went and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, please conduct a science for me and bring up for me one I shall name to you. Then the woman said to him, look, you know what Saul has done. How has, how had, or how he has cut off the medium and the spirit from the land. Why then do you lay a snarl, fair, from your life 
to cause me to die. And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Who shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit as ascending from out of the earth. So he said to her, What is this form? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face, his face to the ground and bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me. Okay, now you're messing up again, so I'll read. He no longer answered me, neither by the prophets or by dreams, so I have called on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, why do you consult me now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done what he predicted to me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to the one of your neighbor, to David. Because you did not obey the Lord and carry out his fierce wrath against the Amalekites, the Lord has done this to you today. The Lord will deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Immediately, Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of, Saul, of Samuel's words. His strength was gone, for he had not eaten nothing all day and all that night. So you see how it comes in together now. So David is in Philistine territory. The mm -hmm. army is going to be given to the Philistines. And it's all coming into fruition, like what's making sense. But I want to talk about something that happened here. Calling on the dead. Now, we talked about that again when we talked about, um, sorry, when we talked about spiritual warfare. That's familiar spirit. All right, we talked about this. So because God is not talking to him, where did he go? He went to the enemy. Yep. And that's what people do sometimes versus just doing what God told you to do. So some man contributes to the story. Of course, it's this medium female and Saul. Uh, what is God trying to teach us? When people don't wait on the word of God, which he couldn't because the Lord had left him, they start to dabble in witchcraft, which is what he's doing. Yeah. Why is God allowing this to happen? To show you how wicked, wicked people can be. Saul was wicked. He didn't deal with his issues. The Lord left him. He's in, under a stronghold. He doesn't know what to do, right? How's this applicable to your life? You need to wait on the Lord to be obedient. That's right. Yeah, and the farther you fall away from the Lord, um, the more you'll dibble and dabble into things of the um, worldly realm, which is satanic and demonic. Justin, can you hear me? Yeah, we heard I don't you. Know if can... Now we're gonna um jump to 29. We're not gonna read this because it's kind of pointless. It's really just the Philistines are getting ready to fight the Israel of well, Israel. We already know they're gonna win because it's already been told to us, right? Um, but David's there and the Philistines recognize him and they're like, Hey, why are you here? We know you. You need to go. We don't we don't want you here. And so, um, what is God trying to teach us in 29? There are going to be times when people don't like you, even when you do everything right, just because of your past. Right? Because the king of Gath thinks he's so great. And it's like, he hasn't done anything to you. He hasn't done anything to us. He's left, the, uh, he's left them. They, he left the Israelites. They're trying to kill him and whatever. And they're like, nah, uh-uh. And I mean, that's just the way people are. 
about dressing Yeah. And, you know, why is God allowing us to have and again to show us that he's by our side and we can be in the mix of our enemies and still find favor? He's in the mix of his enemies and they tell him to leave. They don't just kill him and his men. They say, can y'all leave? Um, but go ahead, mom. What were you going to say? I was just going to say that that's why it's important to, you know, when you're living in the world, people are watching you. That's why it's important to live truthfully and totally because people are watching you. And you don't want to go later on in life when you have made changes in your life to live for the Lord that people uh, look at you as someone that's not truthful or they don't trust you because of your past. Some things you can't fix, um, but God has forgiven you for those things, and you have to walk in um, your righteousness that God has given you and go forward. But things that you can avoid doing, um, knowing what's right and wrong, it will save you in the end because then people will see you that I know this person, I haven't seen her doing wrong. Just look at with the polls with, you know, Biden and Trump. A lot of people don't like what Trump is doing anymore because of the things that he's done wrong. Had he had a certain um, way about him, people would trust him and, and vote for him for a second term. So your past can affect your future. And um, what Justice told you... Go ahead. And that goes both ways for Biden. Biden probably could have won without it being such a landslide if he didn't have a dark past of passing bills of locking up innocent black men, right. black men that are dealing with, um, you know, drug addiction when his own son was dealing with drug addiction at the very same time. So you're going to lock up men for the rest exactly. of their life and be literally the face of mass incarceration. So, I mean, it goes both ways. Correct. And then, the, the, yeah, I was going to say that I was going to um, talk about this, the other side of it, which was that. And the thing is, if he's truly sorry, his past doesn't make him look any better. Like he may truly be like, I passed this law to help people and ended up hurting people. I am sorry and I want to fix it. Now people won't believe him because of what happened. Well, so your, your also, past is very important. I um, think it also has to do with the fact that that bill was passed in the 90s and he could have passed it 10 years. He could have fixed it 10 years ago and he didn't. <laughs> he could fix it 20 years ago and he didn't. Like, he hasn't done well, anything I mean, to fix it. So, I, I think... Well, maybe because he didn't realize it was wrong until all this stuff happened. My whole like, life yeah, I've can, been hearing we can be the people. My whole yeah, life but I've My thing is, if he... They're both... They're both... Okay, Justin. Both they pass is... Mm. It's horrible. Yeah, so uh, the point I was making is your past can affect your future of things you want to do, you know. So that was the main point I was trying to get, get, you know, not to cause a debate, but just to say how your past can affect the decisions that happen in your future. Oh, there was no debate. We both agree. They're terrible. <laughs> yeah, they both are terrible. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys. It's not a political debate, but, yeah, I just wanted to make a point. And then the last chapter is 30, and we've talked about this one in the past. I called it David Spoils, and that's when, um, you know, they went into his camp, and they took the wives, they took their spoil, they took everything, and then David consulted the Lord and was able to get it all back. So what is God trying to teach us with that story? that people will turn on you because there was that one point where they were like they can't stand david and that they wanted to stone him but he sought out the lord and the lord was able to deliver him and get back everything and why is god allowing this to happen the enemy will try to take everything from you that's his whole existence after getting kicked out of out of heaven is to be a person that is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord will give it back to you as long as you're seeking his wisdom. 
And so how is this applicable to your life? Well, it goes right back to five. The enemy is trying to still kill and destroy. And so you need to seek God so that he can deliver you from any type of enemy attacks. Going back to spiritual warfare, which is a series we've already talked about. You have anything you want to add? No, no, this, this is good stuff. I, I agree with everything you're saying. All right, so now we're going to go into that prophetic word in the last, like, five minutes that we have. So I need everybody to go to Amos 5. I don't think it's too long. I think you can read the whole thing, Mom. Yeah, let me get to it. I'm in a car. Hey, Miss Five, what um, which chapter? I mean, which chapter? Just the whole thing. Whole thing. Mm -hmm. Here. And it says, Hear this word which I take up against you, a lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel has fallen. She has God, she will rise no more. She lies forsaken on her land. There is no one to raise her up. For thus saith the Lord God, the city of that goes out by the thousand shall have a hundred left. And that which goes out by the hundred shall have ten left to the house of Israel. Do you want me to continue? Mm -hmm. For thus saith the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live, but do not seek Bethel, nor enter Gilal, Gilgal, nor pass over to Bathsheba. For Gil Gilal, Gilgal shall surely go into captivity and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, with no one to quench it in Bethel. You who turn justice to work wormwood and um, lay righteousness. I need y'all to pay close attention as she's reading these, because this is the key part. I wanted you to kind of get a, a general understanding of what he's talking about. So he's talking about the fall of Israel. And I'm gonna tell you this and speaking prophetically the fall of the US. Okay, now you can go back. Okay, so seven, you who turn justice to onward and light righteousness to rest in the earth. He made the Palais and Orion. He turns the shadow of death unto morning and makes the day dark as night. He calls for the waters of the sea and pour them out on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. He rains ruins upon the strong, so the fury comes upon the fortress. They hate the okay. one who rebukes. Number nine is what we've been talking about, demonic stronghold. Because mm -hmm. mine says, with blinding flashes, he destroys the strongholds and brings the fortified cities to ruin. Remember when I said there was twofold to the, the uh, strongholds that we talked about in David's story. God is always bringing everything together. There's two together. versions of the strongholds. We have the strongholds that we have in our country, like racism, like uh, what it talked about up here, um, laying down justice and not providing justice to those that need it. And as the story continues, it's going to talk about different things that is happening currently in the U.S., but then also talk about the fortified city. We are known to have the biggest military bases in our country. People are literally scared of us because of the weaponry that we have. 
Correct. The Lord says he will bring it down. Now go. That's what he says. Go ahead, Mom. They hate the one who rebukes in the gate, and they abhor, that means to really hate, the one who speaks uprightly. Therefore, because you tread down the poor and you take grain taxes from him, mm. though you shall be built, though you have built houses of hewn stone, yet you shall not dwell in them. Mm. You have planted. Mm. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you should not drink wine from them. And I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins, afflicting the just and taking bribes, divertly, diverting the poor from justice at the gate. Therefore, the prudent keep silent at this time, for it is um, an evil time. Let me read my version um, mm -hmm. for this little section. It says, for I know how many of you, your offenses and how great your sins. There are those who oppress the innocent and take bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Who does that sound like? Okay, you can do it. Mm -hmm. For it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil that you may live. So the Lord of the host will be with you as you have spoken. Hate evil and love good. Establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord of God of hosts will be gracious to you, to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, the Lord God of hosts, the Lord says this, thou shalt be wailing in the streets and there shall, they shall say in all the highways, alive, alive. They me, shall call. Let ahead. me read my version because I need y'all. I need y'all to get this. I need mm -hmm. this to soak in. It says, therefore, there. This is what the Lord, the Lord Almighty, says: There will be a wailing in all the streets and cry of anguish in every public square. The farmers will be mm -hmm. seen to weep and the mourners to wail. There will be wailing in all the vineyards, for I will pass through. Your says the Lord. Mm. Y'all understand what that means? He's talking about now. Think about the vineyards that blew, that burnt up over there in, in, in the um, in California. Martha's Vineyard. All these things going to ruin. Huh. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So. It, Think about it. Think about what's going on now and think about what God is saying. Okay, continue. Verse 18. Okay. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. For what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. <laughs> or as though he went into the house Leaned his, leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. It is not the day of the Lord's darkness and not light. It is not very, it is not very dark with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your feast, feast days and I do not savor your sacred assembly. Though you offer me burnt offerings, uh, and actually, I want to make sure we make this known. And a I lot of, saying, yeah, I realize you paused there because this is what we were talking about the other night. Sorry. Uh -huh, exactly. I'm going to read my version, but I really want y'all to understand. Now he's talking about the church. So first he talks about the whole society as a collective. Then he talked about specific people uh, doing bad things, people of power. And now he's talking about the church. Because if you know anything about the church, if the church is doing their job, then the other things won't occur. But they're not doing their job. And I'm going to read what the word of God says. It says, will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch black without a ray of brightness? I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Oh, Jesus. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Oh, Even oh. though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will not regard for them. 
with any away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. He's talking about the church. Yeah. Y'all are coming together. You know why y'all not y'all not able to host services? Why you gotta do it online? Because the Lord was tired of it. Full of hypocrites. Wow. People not doing what they're supposed to do. You in there praising God, but thinking about the sin you're gonna do right when you leave church. Lord have mercy. God is Speak tired of it. Yes, he is. That's why we're in the midst of the east wind. And, and you know what's even sad about that? What? Is that some people are still not going to bow and repent for the things that they're doing. That's what breaks my heart, Justice. Um, this story. I'm about to pull up a story. Continue reading, Mom. Okay. Um, which, which, okay. Um, what verse was I on? I'm sorry. I, I got you distracted. You are going to be in 24. Okay. But let justice run down like water and righteousness Okay, sorry. Let, but let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Do you offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? You also carry sickle, your king, and chewon, your idol, the stars mm -hmm. of the God, mm -mm -mm, which you made for yourself. Doesn't this sound kind of familiar? Mm -hmm. Therefore, I idols, send you black culture, yep. money, idols, money, cars, all these type of clothing lines, and and and, and uh, I'm about to say hibachi. I mean, uh, <laughs> what is his name with the with the Medusa, Medusa, uh, well, all those people. Um, yeah, just all these things y'all worshiping. These are these gods that God talk about, these little small gods. You think your money is going to save you. You think you're, you're all the stuff of this world. When you go from this world, you won't have none of those things. Therefore, I will send you into captivity beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. I'm trying to find the verse I want to bring up because... It's a beautiful analogy. I, when I find it, and if I can't find it, it's fine. You're going to go back and read it. I know it's in Matthew. But it talks about that they had, they planted out their harvest. And then mm -hmm. the enemy snuck in and planted weed. Weed, yep. And the farmer said, wait till it grows. Because then the weeds are going to sprout. But you know, the reason why you'll be able to tell the weed is because the weed's going to stand up straight. While the harvest, when it's time to pick up the harvest, it's going to bow. Hallelujah. And whatever's Hallelujah. sitting up straight and won't bow will be taken and thrown to a fire. That's right. So, prophetic word. The Lord, and, and I mean, other prophets have been saying this for years. I'm not saying anything different, right? Mm -hmm. He wants the U.S. to repent. Of course, we're not going to. And so because we're okay. not, those who don't will be dealing with this. Mm -hmm. The Lord is tired of the just, of, of being of members of our communities being oppressed, that the mm -hmm. poor aren't receiving justice, that the churches aren't assembling properly, operating in their gifts and being in a orderly fashion. I talked about what that order is. First, the apostles, second, the prophets, two or three. Every church don't have that. Therefore, you are out of order. That's right. Mm. Mm. The Lord is tired. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to see this east wind and you're going to see this north wind. But I wanted to bring you this prophetic word. Read Amos 5. Really read it. I need you to meditate on that. Digest Go it. Go back. Yes, that right. Scroll. Read different versions. If you don't understand one, go to another version so that you can really, truly understand what is being said. Now, the Lord is tired of hearing. I can't wait for the Lord to come. The Lord is going to come. That's all that is. He's tired of it because that's not going to be a glorious day. It will not. It's not. And I had to, I was you one of those. Be a part of the bridegroom. Go ahead, Mom. Sorry. 
I was just saying that I was one of those people, and I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. I was like, I'll be glad when God come and get me. I'm ready to go home. But I had to realize that that He rebuked me. He rebuked me because the thing is, we gonna have a lot of people who are not gonna make it. I can't be selfish and be like, well, Lord, just come back and get me. These people don't want to act right now and talk and spoke and they don't listen. I'm ready to go. No, we have to fight for our brothers and sisters so that they can make it in because this that day is not going to be pretty because there are people who don't believe. There's people that are out here laughing and making fun of Christians because they don't believe. And But that day come, it's going to be a sad, sad day. Go ahead, yeah, Anthony was studying our Bible. I'm going to pull up what we read because this is what's happening. And Anthony was like, wow, this is uh, this was good. It says, do, do, do. for who knows a person's thoughts? Oh, sorry. This is first Corinthians chapter two, verse 11. For who knows a person's thoughts except for their own spirit within them? The same way no one knows the thoughts of God except for the spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit explaining spiritual realities with the spirit taught words. A person without uh, without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are not discerned only through the spirit. That's what's happening. People are seeing things with their spiritual eyes, but people aren't able to understand it. They think it's foolishness and it's because they are not looking at it from a godly perspective from a God lens, from a spiritual lens. And that's the top, that's, the, Jesus said it in his word, that's what we're gonna be experiencing during this time. Persecution. Okay. Jesus did that's not true. come here for the world. People have been mispreaching all this time. He didn't come here for the world. He came here for his bride. He's not praying that's for right. the world. He's praying for his bride. God is for the world. Jesus represents the word of God. The word of God is for his bride. And I know that sounds so counterintuitive and it's confusing, but until you have given your life to Christ, you're not a part of the bride. Uh, 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 uh. Get it together. Now, Jesus did lead the 99 for the one because that one was called. You gotta get. You, I mean, you gotta. You gotta yeah. get into your word, y'all. Gotta get into your word. Jesus wants us to be one. Matter of fact, I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm sorry, and, and it's, it's just on my spirit. I gotta do it. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I was supposed to be done. I'm not done. John seventeen nine for uh, pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those who have given me for for the ones you you god have given me jesus for they are yours god hallelujah that's jesus praying yeah. so he's not worried about the world that's jesus he's worried Jesus's about God. his bride john 17 15 through 19 my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one they are not of the world mm -hmm. even as i am not of it so we are one in Christ. When God sees us, he sees Jesus once we give our life to Christ. Sanctify mm -hmm. them by the truth. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I've sent them into the world. Jesus was released in the world. That's why we are in the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. Therefore, Jesus is saying, just like he was sanctified, we are too supposed to be sanctified. My prayer is not that they, for them to be alone. He doesn't want us to be alone and be ostracized in this uh, world. I pray for, I also pray 
for those who will believe in me through their message through their message as all of them may be one because they are called right but one with the father just as you are in me as i am in you so he wants us all to be united and we're not may they also be in us so that the world may believe in you who have sent me it's all full circle y'all we're all in this together i've given you i've given them the glory so we are glory we have glory god jesus has glorified us okay he said i have given you the glory that was given to me that you may also be one as we are one i am in them and you're in me so that they may be brought into complete unity that's literally poetry literally poetry uh -huh. then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me so god loves us so much uh -huh. and he expects us to be unified we need to be unified and that's through the love of jesus so i hope you are blessed tonight with this word i pray that you remain blessed in this time i told you things are getting worse and you're seeing why now uh -huh. You're seeing why it's coming into fruition. So be prepared. I love you. Peace and blessings. Um, you have anything you want to add before we close, Mom? Oh, just I was focus and pray. Everybody bow your heads. Well, we already prayed at the beginning. Oh, you want to pray again? No, I was gonna close out, but okay, that's fine. You go ahead, Ma. You can. Everybody bow your heads. Father God, thank you for the word that came forth tonight. We thank you and honor you and praise you for that. Father God, we thank you for justice, your prophetess, prophetess who has shared your word um, and your um, prophecy for us in these last days. Lord, we thank you for that. Father God, we ask you to cover everyone who is in Bible study tonight, Lord. Cover them and, and let them see you for who you are and desire to learn more about you in your ways and to live righteously in your eyes. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We love you. In Jesus' name, praise Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a great night, y'all. All right. Love and peace and blessings. Bye.